Welcome back to Blue Collar Coder. I'm Jack Harrington, and this is another of our deep dives into all things ECMAScript. So we've done objects, we've done arrays, we've done dates, we've done functions. We didn't do strings, so let's jump into strings. Now, before I begin, I just gotta say, I've learned a lot in this process, so thanks for that, and I'm hoping you learn stuff too. So let's go in and check out strings together. All right, into strings we go. No time to dilly-dally. We've got so little to learn and so much time to learn it in. Oh wait, scratch that, reverse it. All right, so what are some ways to create a string? First, the way everybody knows, just create one. So here we're setting the my name constant to Jack. You could also use a string template. So in this case, we are taking that Jack value in my name and adding it to Harrington. That's the whole name. You can also do a string from a character code. So you could use as many numbers, as many ASCII values as you want in here. And it's gonna go stack those up and make a string for you. So this is just gonna give us A, B, C. Easy as one, two, three. Okay, you can also do from a code point, which is like a Unicode value. So in this case, a star. Oh, that's nice. Moving on. You can also use the repeat value. So we're actually gonna do most of this tutorial using just a string dot and then some method. and that is absolutely valid. That's one of the great things about JavaScript is that, you know, right out of the box, a string is an object and you can just start working on it with dot. So in this case, we're gonna use a repeated 10 times. We can also get the value of something as we can with every single thing in JavaScript, which is great. So let's go and add a string. So we can take short name and then add on to it, Smith. We can only do that because that's not a constant. We've created that with let. We can also concat, so in this case, we start with con name, Jack, and we concat Connor onto it. Here's the trick though, it's actually gonna just return a new string with that value, John Connor. The original value will not be harmed in the making of that film. Okay, so what is the length of foo? Turns out to be three. What's the first character in Jane Smith? Turns out to be J. What's the second one? Lowercase a. What's the character code at the second character? That's 97 in ASCII. What's the code point? Also 97. It's not a Unicode string. So how do we take a portion of a string? Well, there's a couple of different ways to do that. There's slice, substring, and substir, all of which basically do essentially the same thing. They just give you a portion of a string. So given a starting value and a count, it gives you back that portion of the string starting at that value. So let's go look at some ways to figure out what's in a string. So we can first ask if Jane Smith ends with Smith. Turns out it does. You can ask if Jane Smith starts with Jane. Turns out it does. You can ask if Jane Smith includes the word Smith anywhere in the string, and it does. And all this is case sensitive. You can ask what the index of Smith is within Jane Smith. and returns to you that that's five. If it didn't find it, it would be negative one which it happens there because we are using lowercase smith, and yes, that does not exist in there. What's the index of a dog in dog, cat, dog? Well, zero, but the last index of it is eight. You can also start using some regex stuff. So in this case, we're gonna look for dog, cat, dog and match it against dog, but we can also use a regular expression for that, and in this case, we're using a case insensitive regular expression using the i flag. So slash dog slash creates a new regular expression and the I flag after that gives it case insensitivity. We can also use the G global flag and that gives us all of the hits of dog inside of dog cat dog. And if we turn off that case insensitivity, we do not match. That gives us a null in this case. And if we use match all, we get some more information about each one of the hits in that. So dog cat dog has a bunch of hits and we convert those back into an array. It's by default iterable. So we convert that back to an easy to use array using array.from as we saw back in the array video. Another thing you can do is search. So that's gonna tell you that yes, cat appears in there at four. We can split. So split is gonna take a string and break it up into an array of strings. So we can take dog, cat, dog with one space in between each, split it on space and get back dog, cat, dog. But what if there are multiple spaces? Well, we don't want multiple things. We still want dog, cat, dog. So in this case, we can split on a regular expression. We're gonna use the slash S operator, which is for white space. I'm not sure why slash S for white space, but it is. You can say plus, which means at least one or more of those. And you get back 
dog hat dog. Isn't that nice? Okay, let's have some fun around padding. So we'll take Jesse and we'll make sure that Jesse is 10 characters wide by padding to the start using an underscore. Pad to the end, again, using underscore. That just makes it so it's easy to see. You can use spaces, you can use whatever you want. All right, let's go with replace. So we're gonna go take dog, cat, dog, and replace any cat with a dog. So now we got dog, cat, dog becomes dog, dog, dog. We can also use regex to do that replacement. And now the uppercase cat is now a dog as well because we use a case insensitive regex. Trimming, okay, let's take Karen that has a lot of extra white space in it and replace any space in there globally with an underscore. So we can see that's how replace works. So we can see, again, a cool use of replacement. And I'm gonna use that because trim is looking for white space. So I'm gonna use that replace to basically show the effect of a trim. So we're gonna take the Karen string, trim the start of it, and then replace any other characters, any following characters with the underscore. And that's another nice thing about strings is all of these methods return strings so you can do that cool chaining thing. So here I'm chaining replace to trim start. And you'll see that a lot. You'll see, you know, trim this, split that, and it all just kind of dot, 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 dot. And trim the end. So that's going to give us the Karen, but still with the padding in the start. And then you can trim both directions with just trim. Honestly, like it killed me that the first releases of JavaScript didn't have trim in it. It was like this one recipe that like all around the, the internet, like nobody would know regexes. And then you just pass around this like trim recipe. But now we have trim, so we can use it. All right, and then a few more. Let's do uppercase. So you can take Megan and make it uppercase. Megan, make it lowercase. And then also do the same in the locales and get a locale specific upper and lower case, which is probably safer if you have an I-18 and globalized app. All right, well, I hope you learned a lot more about strings. I know I've learned a lot more through all this process. So if you like this video, just hit that like button. If you are interested in these videos in general, hit that subscribe button and click on that bell and you'll get notified when any new videos show up. And of course, if you have questions or comments, be sure to leave those down in the comment section below. I really enjoy talking to you about all these videos. It's been great. And in the meantime, be happy, be healthy, and be safe.